Just when the world began to breathe again, just when we thought the worst was behind us, a new threat emerges from the shadows, an ancient virus with roots deep in the jungles of Central Africa. For decades, it lingered in obscurity, confined to remote villages and isolated outbreaks. But now, it's spreading, creeping into places it was never meant to reach, carried by the threads of our interconnected world. We've seen it before, and it all sounds horribly familiar. The virus, once thought to be contained, suddenly breaking free, killing indiscriminately and wreaking havoc on a global scale. Chaos, recessions, vast quantities of misinformation and corporate greed looking to profit from the mayhem. Sounds like Groundhog Day, doesn't it? But this isn't COVID part two, this is Mpox. Mpox, formerly known as monkeypox, is a virus that belongs to the same family as smallpox, the orthopox virus family. The first recorded case of Mpox was in 1958, when it was discovered in monkeys kept for research, hence the name. However, it wasn't until 1970 that the first human case was documented in the Democratic Republic of Congo. Since then, Mpox has remained mostly under the radar, causing sporadic outbreaks in Central and West Africa. For years, it was considered a rare and contained threat, affecting only those in close contact with infected animals or people in remote regions. But in recent years, something has changed. Mbox has started to spread beyond its traditional boundaries, reaching countries that had never seen a single case before. Global travel, urbanization, and deforestation are heavily contributing to this disturbing trend, creating the perfect conditions for a virus like Mbox to escape its cage. So, what happens if you catch Mbox? Well, the symptoms can be severe and in some cases even deadly. It starts with flu like symptoms fever, chills, muscle aches, and fatigue. You might think, is just a bad cold or the flu. But then the real telltale sign appears, a rash. The rash often starts on the face and then spreads to other parts of the body, including the palms of the hands and the soles of the feet. It begins as flat red spots that turn into raised bumps and then fluid-filled blisters before eventually crusting over. It's a painful, disfiguring process that can leave lasting scars. And that's just the start. Mpox can lead to serious complications, especially in people with weakened immune systems, as well as children and pregnant women. These complications can include pneumonia, sepsis, and encephalitis, an inflammation of the brain that can cause permanent neurological damage or even death. The mortality rate for Mpox varies depending on the strain, but it can be as high as 10%, particularly in areas with limited access to healthcare. Compare that to COVID-19 with its mortality rate of around 0.5 to 2%, and you start to understand why Mpox is a virus that we can't afford to ignore. The virus is primarily transmitted from animals to humans, usually through contact with infected animals like rodents and primates, or by handling bushmeat. Once it reaches humans, it can spread from person to person, and that's where things get really concerning. Human-to-human -human transmission occurs through close contact with an infected person's bodily fluids, respiratory droplets, or skin lesions. This means that activities like caring for someone with Mbox, sharing bedding or clothing, or even being in close proximity for extended periods can put you at risk. Now, what makes Mbox particularly tricky is its potential for airborne transmission. While it's not as quickly spread through the air, like viruses like COVID-19, there's evidence that prolonged face-to-face -face contact can result in the virus being transmitted via respiratory droplets. This could lead to rapid spread in crowded, poorly ventilated spaces, especially in areas with dense populations. But the absolute nightmare scenario is if the virus mutates, becoming more transmissible or resistant to existing treatments. Viruses like Mpox, with their ability to spread through multiple routes and cause severe disease, are precisely the kind of pathogens that can slip through the cracks of our global defenses. While the world remains COVID-weary, and many are deeply suspicious about how it all unfolded, the thought of another pandemic is something few are willing to face. However, the potential for a widespread outbreak is real, and growing by the day. Now, when we think about pandemics, our minds naturally go to COVID-19, the virus that recently brought the world to its knees. Like COVID-19, Mpox has the potential to spread quickly, especially in a world where global travel is the norm. A virus once confined to remote regions of Africa is now showing up in countries worldwide, just as COVID-19 did in its early days. Both viruses can also cause severe illness and death, particularly among vulnerable populations. But here's where Mpox differs, 
and where the danger lies. Unlike COVID-19, which primarily spreads through respiratory droplets, Mpox can spread through multiple routes, direct contact with bodily fluids, contaminated objects, and potentially through prolonged close contact. This multifaceted transmission makes Mpox harder to contain, especially when people live in close quarters or have limited access to hygiene and medical facilities. One of the most terrifying aspects of any virus is its ability to mutate. We saw this with COVID-19, how variants like Delta and Omicron changed the course of the pandemic, making the virus more transmissible and in some cases more deadly. Mpox is no different. Like all viruses, it has the potential to evolve. Currently, Mpox is relatively stable, with two main strains, the West African strain and the Central African strain, also known as the Congo Basin strain. The West African strain is less deadly, with a mortality rate of around 1%, while the Congo Basin strain can be much more severe, with a mortality rate of up to 10%. But what if these strains were to mutate? Or what if a new variant emerged that combines the high transmissibility of the West African strain with the lethality of the Congo Basin strain? Or what if Mpox developed resistance to existing vaccines and treatments? These are not just hypothetical scenarios, they are real possibilities that could have devastating consequences. The longer Mpox spreads unchecked, the more opportunities it has to mutate. Once a virus begins to change, it becomes increasingly difficult to predict and control. This is why early detection, rapid response, and ongoing research is crucial in preventing a potential disaster. After years of battling COVID-19, healthcare systems around the world are exhausted. Resources are depleted. Healthcare workers are burned out. And public trust in health authorities has been shaken. This creates a perfect storm for a virus like Mpox to exploit. In many parts of the world, especially in low-income countries, healthcare systems are already stretched thin. They may lack the infrastructure to identify and isolate cases quickly, the resources to provide adequate care, or the vaccines needed to prevent the spread of the virus. Even in wealthier countries, the public's fatigue from COVID could hinder the response to Mbox. After enduring lockdowns, mask mandates, and vaccine rollouts, many people are simply tired of it. They may be less likely to comply with public health measures or to take a new threat seriously until it's too late. And then there's the issue of misinformation. During the COVID-19 pandemic, we saw how quickly false information could spread, sowing confusion and undermining efforts to control the virus. The same could easily happen with Mbox. If people are misinformed about how the virus spreads, how dangerous it is, or what they can do to protect themselves, they may unknowingly contribute to its spread. Mpox is no longer confined to the remote jungles of Central and West Africa. Cases are popping up in regions that have never dealt with the virus before, from Europe to North America, Asia to the Middle East. In 2003, the US saw a major outbreak that saw 47 confirmed and probable cases of Mpox reported across six states, Illinois, Indiana, Kansas, Missouri, Ohio, and Wisconsin. All of the individuals who contracted the disease fell ill after coming into contact with pet prairie dogs. These prairie dogs had become infected after being housed near small mammals imported from Ghana. This marked the first time that human cases of Mpox were reported outside of Africa. Fast forward more than 20 years and 122 countries have now experienced at least one Mbox case. One of the most alarming outbreaks occurred recently in Europe. In 2022, several countries, including the UK, Spain, and Portugal, reported unexpected cases of Mbox. These were not isolated incidents. Dozens of cases emerged almost simultaneously, raising concerns about the virus's ability to spread undetected across borders. Moreover, many of these cases were not linked to travel to Africa, suggesting that the virus spread locally within these countries. In the UK, the first case of Mpox was identified in 2022 in a traveler returning from Nigeria. The individual was isolated and treated, but additional cases were detected soon after in people with no direct connection to that first patient. These individuals had not traveled to Africa or had contact with the initial case. This led to the realization that Mpox was spreading within the community, likely through close personal contact. In Spain, the situation was even more concerning. A large cluster of Mbox cases was linked to a single event, a festival that drew attendees from across the country and beyond. This event acted as a super spreader, leading to dozens of cases in a matter of days. The virus spread quickly among attendees, who then returned to their respective cities, carrying the virus with them. In North America, the United States and Canada have reported multiple cases. In some instances, these cases were linked to international travel, but there have also been instances of local transmission. This indicates that Mpox is not just an imported problem. It's becoming domestic. 
In May 2022, the World Health Organization made an emergency announcement of the existence of a multi-country outbreak of mpox, and just over two years later, the number of confirmed global cases is nearing 100,000, though the actual figure is thought to be much higher, and there's been at least 140 deaths. The United States, so far, has seen 32,000 cases with 58 deaths. While 2023 saw a drop in cases, numbers have surged again in 2024. There have been more than 17,000 cases and 524 deaths in Africa this year, which already exceeds last year's figures, with 96% of cases coming from the Congo. The current outbreak is now present in 11 more African countries, and while spread outside of the continent has so far been limited, things could ramp up quickly. To make matters worse, a new strain, Clade 1, has now appeared, which seems to be transmitted primarily through sexual intercourse. So far, Clade 1 is only present in the African basin region around the DRC, with a single case reported in Sweden. However, the WHO is now sounding the alarm and releasing additional funds to address the outbreak, but with much of the world entertained with political sideshows, or whichever culture war is in vogue right now, this is an outbreak that is getting far less attention that it probably deserves. One of the first lines of defense has been heightened surveillance. Countries are increasingly monitoring for mpox cases, especially in areas where the virus has never been seen. This includes tracking new cases, conducting contact tracing, and isolating infected individuals to prevent further spread. Laboratories worldwide are also ramping up their capacity to test for mpox, which is crucial for early detection and containment. International organizations like the WHO are coordinating with governments to share information, resources, and best practices for managing mpox outbreaks. They're working to ensure that countries with weaker healthcare systems have access to the support they need to identify and respond to cases quickly. In some regions, especially where mpox is endemic, efforts are being made to control the virus at its source by targeting animal reservoirs. This involves reducing human-animal interactions in high-risk areas and educating communities about the dangers of handling bushmeat or coming into contact with wild animals that might carry the virus. Regarding vaccination and treatment, we're in a slightly better position than we were at the start of COVID-19, but significant challenges remain. The smallpox vaccine, which has been around for decades, offers some protection against mpox. In fact, people who have been vaccinated against smallpox are believed to have around 85% protection against it. However, routine smallpox vaccination was stopped in most countries after the disease was declared eradicated in 1980, which means that younger generations are largely unprotected. Some countries have begun to reintroduce smallpox vaccination for healthcare workers and people who are at high risk of exposure to mpox. However, scaling up vaccination efforts globally is a complex and costly task. The current supply of smallpox vaccines is limited, and producing more takes time. There's also the challenge of distributing the vaccine to those who need it most, particularly in remote or conflict-affected areas. No specific antiviral drugs are currently approved for mpox treatment. However, supportive care, such as treating symptoms and preventing complications, can significantly improve outcomes for those infected. In severe cases, antiviral drugs developed for smallpox, like tecoviramat, may be used under compassionate use protocols, but these are not widely available and are not guaranteed to work. Research is ongoing to develop more effective treatments and possibly even mpox-specific vaccines. But, as with any emerging infectious disease, it is a race against time. The longer it takes to develop and distribute these interventions, the greater the risk that mpox could spread uncontrollably. Now, as we said, if all of this begins to sound like Groundhog Day, that's kind of the point. It starts with a few isolated cases in a major city. The initial response is swift, but as the virus spreads, it becomes clear that it will not be easily contained. The number of cases rises rapidly, and soon hospitals are overwhelmed. Healthcare workers, already exhausted from previous crises, struggle to keep up. Governments around the world have begun to impose travel restrictions and lockdowns, schools close, businesses shut, and once bustling cities become quiet. The fear of infection keeps people indoors, and those who venture out do so with a sense of dread, knowing that the virus could be lurking anywhere. The economy grinds to a halt, supply chains break down, leading to shortages of essential goods. Unemployment rates soar, and many small businesses are forced to close their doors for good. The social fabric starts to fray as people become more isolated, distrustful, desperate. In the hardest hit areas, the death toll rises. The virus, with its higher mortality rate, claims more lives than anyone anticipated. Families are torn apart by loss, and the mental health crisis deepens as people struggle to cope with the grief and uncertainty. As the pandemic drags on, the global response becomes increasingly fragmented. Some countries contain the virus through strict measures and widespread vaccination, while others struggle with outbreaks. International cooperation, so crucial in the early days, begins to wane as nations focus on their own survival. 
This is the nightmare scenario, a world ravaged by a virus that was once considered a distant threat, but is now an all too real catastrophe. Of course, things could always work out much better than this, but after COVID-19, it's fair to say that some fear the worst. So could Mpox actually become the next pandemic? The short answer is yeah, it could. The potential is certainly there. Mpox has already demonstrated its ability to cross borders, spread within communities, and evade detection until it's too late. The virus's ability to spread through various methods makes it particularly dangerous in densely populated areas. However, whether Mpox will reach pandemic scale depends on several factors. One key point is the speed and effectiveness of the global response. If public health systems can identify and contain outbreaks quickly, ramp up vaccination efforts, and communicate effectively with the public, there's a good chance we can prevent Mpox from spiraling out of control. But if these measures fail, or if the virus mutates in a way that makes it more transmissible or deadly, the pandemic risk increases significantly. In the wake of COVID-19, many people are understandably wary of new health threats. There's a sense of fatigue, a desire to move on and return to normal life. This could lead to a dangerous complacency where people dismiss the threat of Mpox as just another virus and fail to take the necessary precautions. Then there's the tricky topic of vaccinations. How many people around the world would trust a new vaccination that suddenly appears fresh off of Pfizer's magical pharmaceutical conveyor belt? You could be certain the misinformation monster would soon go into overdrive and will be faced with a torrent of bizarre claims about Mbox, which will only exacerbate the situation. Quite simply, a lot of people don't trust their governments or their media, and if they start preaching about a new deadly disease and mandating new controls, there could be a significant backlash. On the other hand, the memory of COVID-19 could work in our favor. Many saw firsthand how quickly a virus can spread and how devastating the consequences can be. If they recognize the signs early and are willing to take action, whether by getting vaccinated, following public health guidelines, or supporting government measures, we might be able to prevent Mbox from reaching pandemic status. While the mass public response is still some way off, Mbox is now more than just a distant threat. This is a virus with the potential to disrupt our world in ways we can't afford to ignore. Mbox could easily be the spark that ignites the next global crisis. We're at a crossroads. Either we take the lessons learned from past pandemics and we act swiftly to contain this virus, or we risk watching history repeat itself in a much darker, deadlier form.